Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run. How long before I can run with a stress fracture? Well, this is a great question. This is the first question I get from runners when they get a stress fracture, like a metatarsal stress fracture in the foot. Now, this also, of course, could apply in large part to other kinds of stress fractures, like a tibial stress fracture or a calcaneal stress fracture or any other stress fracture in your foot. But the real question isn't like, how long should I run? Everybody wants to think that it's like one answer, like six weeks, four weeks, two weeks, two days, one answer that applies to everybody. That, of course, is completely absurd. I mean, how long does it take for somebody to become a millionaire? Well, that depends. It depends on how much money you earn, and it depends on what you do with that money, right? So if you make $300,000 a year, but you buy a Lamborghini, it's probably going to take you longer to become a millionaire than somebody who uh, invests all that money. And the same thing with the healing process. It depends on what you do. It depends on what you put into your system. It depends on what you do once you put those things into your system that all can affect your healing rate. So, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about this because it is really a valid question. It's a question I get all the time. And when I lecture at medical conferences on running injuries, I get the same kinds of questions from doctors. And later uh, next week, I'm going to be lecturing at the International Foot and Ankle Foundation meeting in Lake Tahoe. And I know doctors are going to ask me the same questions that runners ask, like, how long should it take for this kind of injury? How long should it take for that kind of injury before I can run? And stress fractures are no exception. They are one of the most common injuries that afflict runners and one of the things that keep runners from running more than anything else. Right, the short answer is this. You can run as soon as the metatarsal bone has healed enough, become stable enough to withstand the stress you apply to that bone when you run. So I know that sounds sort of elementary, but it's true. The thing is, is it all depends on, you know, like I said, how fast you heal and what you do to reduce that stress. The simple answer that doctors give you is don't run. You know, it's stressful when you run. It's hard on the bone when you run and you, you are running and you caused a metatarsal stress fracture. So if you keep doing that, you're just going to make it worse. Now that is true, but that's not what I teach runners. What I teach runners and what I teach doctors to teach runners is that you have to figure out how you can reduce the stress to that particular bone while you run. So, like I said, if you really wanna run, you just have to wait until the bone's stable enough to withstand whatever stress you're applying to it. That doesn't always mean that you can't run, but it does mean three things. The first thing is that you have to let the bone strengthen. In short, you have to let it heal some, but the healing process is a continuum of improvement that happens over a long period of time. So. Initially, you have the injury to the bone, then you get some collagen forming, stabilizing that little fracture in the bone, and then that starts to calcify over time, then it gets remodeled and becomes stronger and stronger and stronger over time. You don't have to wait for the entire process to finish before you start using it. You know, you can basically increase your activity level as it gets stronger and stronger, but you have to let that healing process begin. And there are all kinds of things you can do that will improve or slow down that healing process. So if you don't do anything different with your nutrition, you don't sleep well, you don't stay hydrated, and you keep running on it or jumping rope or doing something that's applying too much stress to the bone, well, it's not gonna heal. So initially you need to protect it and you need to make sure that you're putting materials into your body that you need to rebuild that bone. I know that sounds simple, but it is simply true. You have to do it. So that's part of the stuff that we talk about throughout different lessons in the metatarsal stress fracture course about how to actually figure out what you need to do to build up that process of healing the bone and fortify that process so it can happen faster. Now the second thing you have to do is you have to reduce some of the stress to that bone when you run. So if you're gonna run and you wanna to continue to run, you have to reduce the stress. There are lots of ways to do that. You can do something as simple as running uh, in a pool right? That reduces the stress because it reduces the weight of gravity. You can run on an alter G treadmill, which is a fancy treadmill that reduces the force of gravity as you run, and you can program it to specific percentages of gravity. You can use pads in your shoes to take pressure off of the injured bone and apply it somewhere else. You can run on a surface that tilts your foot in a way that will actually reduce stress to that injured bone, but you have to do something. So if you keep running in the same way that injured the bone in the first place, Obviously, that's not going to help the healing process. That's going to hinder the healing process. So you just have to really be thoughtful about this and figure out if you want to run, 
That increases the stress level, but how do you decrease the stress level to that particular bone so you can actually continue running without increasing the stress level applied to the bone when you run? And then the third thing you have to do is you have to monitor it. You have to pay real close attention for the signs that it's getting worse, that you're actually re-injuring the bone. You have to look for things like pain, swelling, bruising. They're all signs that you're re-injuring the bone. If you're running on it and you're ramping up your running and then you get a huge bruise on your foot, well, what happened? If you didn't drop a turkey on it, something happened, right? So in all likelihood, you actually cracked the bone, it bled under the skin and you saw a bruise. So if you're running and you're getting bruising, you know for sure you're making it worse. Now, most runners don't take it that far, but if you're running and you're getting an increase in swelling, that means that you're actually applying too much force because you're having a rebound inflammatory response and you get extra fluid in the tissue and you see swelling. Same thing with pain. If you're running and it hurts, that is not a good sign. That means you need to reduce the stress more so that it doesn't hurt because in all likelihood, you're just applying too much force to that bone. You're applying enough force that you're actually causing pain. So there are lots of other indicators you can look at, but you have to really monitor it very closely and systematically if you really want to continue to run and not make it worse. But if you're really thoughtful about this, if you're really careful, if you're really paying attention, if you're really diligent about doing all of these three things, you can get back to running a whole lot sooner than the standard treatments often allow. And the last thing a runner wants is to sit around in a fracture walking boot for a month and a half or two months, like waiting for some magical process to happen where suddenly it's healed and now you can run. Because then if you do that, once you get out of the fracture walking boot, you get off of crutches or out of the wheelchair, you're basically so weak and stiff, you're more at risk of other overtraining injuries later. And if your goal is really to do another race in a couple of months or four months or six months or even later this year, well, then that's a serious problem because you're going to be so weak and stiff that it's going to take you forever to ramp back up to your normal running fitness. And during that process, you may get re-injured with something else. So remember, you got to have three things that you got to do if you really want to get back to running sooner than the normal patient. And when you go see your doctor, don't just take some four week, six week, eight week timeline, or, you know, 16 weeks, whatever they give you is the normal answer just to say, well, look, if they say if it's 14 weeks before you're going to run, say, well, is that 14 weeks for me as a young, healthy athlete? Or is that 14 weeks for like all the other old people I saw sitting in the waiting room? Is it, is you tell everybody 14 weeks or is it only 14 weeks given my unique set of circumstances? And then if that is true for my circumstances, what can we do? What can I do? What can I do differently to speed up the healing, reduce the stress on the bone so I can get back to running sooner? You have to remember when you go to the doctor, you got to ask the right questions if you want to get the right answers. And just asking them what the way that they treat a fracture, well, that's not what you want. You don't want the, the way that they treat every other patient. You want something individualized, customized, particularly for you, so you can get back to running. Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run.